You can write a question. Uh, the northern vertex of a wave circle. The northern vertex of a wave circle is 60 degrees north, 30 degrees east. We'll leave some space for the question. We'll complete the question one by one. Can we leave some four or five lines for the question? Yeah. So, so we have a great circle here which has its northern vertex on 60 degree north, 30 degree east. Let me draw a weight circle first to be explained. This is the center of the earth, this is the east, west, north, south. Look at the great circle here. Uh, this is a great circle because if I click a knife, if I cut along this great circle, I'll get a circle of the greatest area and the circular cross section will have the same center and therefore same radius as that of the earth. That's why it's called as a great circle, right? So if I travel along the great circle, if I fly along the great circle all the way, I will reach a point. So basically the aircraft can fly along the great circle. You will reach a point here where you will reach the highest latitude. India. Yeah. Right? And after reaching that, which is that attitude? So if I mark the attitude here very roughly. 60 degree north. That's right, it's right straight here. 60 so degree north. Attitude straight there is that, which is 60 degree north. That is what is called as the northernmost latitude of the great circle. At the same time, as I'm doing this, I'm passing through multiple meridian and finally reaching this particular meridian here. So I've drawn the circle in such a way that this meridian is on one of my sides of the earth. So it becomes a side view, right? And that is 30 degrees east. Therefore, that is why we call the 60 degree north, 30 degree east as the northernmost vertex. Any further movement, the aircraft is going to come down on the latitude. This is the northernmost all the way up. It can reach. And similarly, as the aircraft is flying all the way down so to this side, it's going to reach the southernmost vertex all the way up here, right? Now, we can write the first question under that. Under this, you can write number one, the three different questions. Number one, find the southern vertex. Find the southern vertex. Find the southern vertex. Yes, so what can you say about the southern vertex? If the northern vertex is 60 north, 30 east. It will be 60 degree north, uh, 30, sorry, 60 degree south. South. Same latitude with opposite sign. Yes. And what about the meridian? It might be 150 degree west. That's good. 150 degrees west. So basically, the southern vertex and northern vertex are antipodal points which means the yeah. latitude values are the same with opposite sign and the longitudes must add up to form 180. So 180 this is 30, degree. this is 180 minus 30 which is 150 with opposite sign. If this is east, this has to be west. That's the first question. The yeah. first question is answered. So the southern vertex is 60 degrees south, 150 degrees west. Easy, right? It's, it's not a big issue, right? All right, now, uh, what is the next question? Find the coordinates of, find the coordinates of the point of crossover, find the coordinates of the point of crossover. Point of crossover. Crossover, yes, point of crossover okay. of the great circle and the equator. Of the great circle and the equator.
Okay. So we can see the equator is crossed, the, the gauge circle is crossing the equator at some point over here. This is point yeah. the point there, we're talking about point P. Right. Is there any other point where the gauge circle is crossing the equator? Yeah, the back side, like on the other side, right? Here, primary right? Answer. right? This is yeah. huge. They are asking you to find out the coordinates, which means you have to write the latitude and longitude of point P and Q. So what can you say straight? The latitude will be zero. Zero, because it's on uh, the, the equator. You can write through the north or south, doesn't matter, right? Now the problem here is in the, in the longitudes, right? Now you see, let's, to understand, so understand the longitude, what do we have to have first? We have to draw something. What is that? To understand the longitude of point long. P, I have to draw the meridian that is passing through point P. Hmm. The, the value of which is what is called as longitude. And therefore, this will have an anti-meridian. And will you understand if I say the anti-meridian is going to pass through Q? Yes. The anti-meridian is, is going to pass through Q. So points P and Q are lying on a meridian and anti-meridian, right? They have the same latitude value, 0 degrees and 0 degrees. So what can you say about point P and point Q? They have the same, they lie on a meridian and anti-meridian and they have same latitude values with opposite sign. Now because this can be north or south, so 0 degrees doesn't really matter. So what is it? P and Q? They are again antipodal. They are again antipodal. So which means if I can find out the longitude of P, I can straight away find out the longitude of Q just the way you found out the yes. southern of the border. are also yeah. antipodal, right? So to understand this better, yes. let's draw the top view. So I told you before as well, uh, to understand longitudes better, top view is the best view. Because top view yes. can give you the entire longitude system uh, in a in single glance, right? Yes, here I had to mark dotted lines for anti meridian and stuff because it's a front view. But in top view, you can actually mark all of them together. Yeah. Right? So we're looking from the north pole, north celestial pole. Therefore, this is going to be a true north. We're looking at the equator here. Um, southern vertex. Is southern vertex. So I won't be able to see. Yeah, so northern vertex is 30 degrees east, southern vertex is 150 degrees west. Right. So first thing first, let's draw the prime meridian that is a reference for us. Prime meridian, anti-prime meridian. All right. Now, where will I mark 30, uh, 30 degrees east? It's towards the eastern side. So from here, I have to go anti-clockwise. That is the uh, eastern hemisphere side. So eastern hemisphere is going to be here. Right. So this is. I'll mark 30 degrees east here and this angle is going to be 30 degrees. How can I mark off the degrees west? It will be like 30 degrees from... It's, it's anti-meridian, ah, right? Yes. We are anti-portal, right? Therefore this is 150 yeah. degrees west. Yeah. Right? Now, uh, from this 150 degrees west, you're traveling, you're crossing the equator and you're reaching 30 degrees east. Mm -hmm. Right? Since they have the same latitude values, don't you think that this meridian is actually going to be exactly midway between 150 mm -hmm. west and 30 east? Yes. Right? And therefore this anti-meridian is going to be midway between 30 degrees east and 150 degrees west on the other side. Mm -hmm. right? So yes. basically we have 30 degree east, 150 west here, right? Now if, if I mark a meridian meridian here, this is going to be where the points P and Q are. Yes, okay, yes. Right? Now by mid meridian, what do we understand? It is off by how many degrees? 90. Because the total is 180, the mid has to be 90. So if this is 30 degrees east, when you travel eastward, from 30 degrees east by 90 degree, what is going to be the meridian? 120 so we degree. So we have to add 90, right? So it's going to be 120 degrees, yeah. and it has not crossed anti-prime meridian, so it is again still east. 
right? East. Now, from 30 degrees, if I go westward, from eastern hemisphere or eastern uh, longitude, I'm traveling westward. Why westward? Because I'm traveling in the clockwise direction. Therefore, it's a westward mm -hmm. travel. Yeah. What happens? You lose 90 degrees. 90 degrees is subtracted from that. So, where will you reach? After traveling 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees west. So after traveling 30 degrees, you reach prime meridian. You have to travel 60 more. Therefore, the 60 degrees west. Mm -hmm. Even without that, if you know these points in antipodal, once you get 100 degrees east, you can automatically say this is going to be 60 degrees. So point P. So which is which? Which one is this point P and which one is this point Q? So from 150 degrees west, you have to travel like this to reach Q. So look from the top, if I'm traveling like this, what direction am I traveling? I'm traveling in more or less anti-clockwise direction. Right? Anti-clockwise direction. Because easterly travel. Yeah. So from 150 degrees west, I have to travel east to reach P. So from 150 degrees west, I have to travel east means which direction should I travel? Should I be traveling number one like this or should I be traveling yeah. number two like this? Uh, number one. Number one. Yes, because it is anti-clockwise. Easterly yeah. travel is always yeah. anti-clockwise in the top view. So from 150 degrees west, when yeah. I travel easterly, I'm reaching 60 degrees west. Therefore, this point on the equator, because we know the points on the equator, is point P, and therefore that point is point Q. Q. Right. So point P will be zero degrees north, 60 degrees. 60 west. degrees. West. And point Q is one zero Q degrees. Q will be one twenty degrees. This is not a very popular question. I have hardly seen these questions being asked for CPL. Once or twice they have asked, and when they asked, what they asked was they have given the northern vertex and they have asked to find southern vertex. So it's as simple as that. But your syllabus or your basic textbooks do have these kind of problems. That's why we are doing it. Uh, just in case if they ask for the exam, it's very easy. If you can understand this, you get score mark very easy. Right? Mm -hmm. Did you understand? So the point of crossover of the great circle with the equator is point P, 0 degrees north, 60 west, and point Q, 120 degrees east, 0 degrees north. Did you understand how we found that out? Yes, sir. Right? We actually mark 150 yes. west and 30 east, and we mark the mid meridian there, all the way. Yeah. Right? Yes. So you can write the answer for question number two. Uh, question number two, this is the explanation. So we have a single diagram here. You can probably mark everything on the single diagram.